people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with India-Thailand Joint Commission meeting, which aimed to take partnership between the two countries. India's External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar and Thailand's Deputy Prime Minister Bahida Nukara reviewed the progress in wide-ranging areas of bilateral cooperation, including in defence and security, trade and investments, connectivity, science and technology. India's bilateral relations with Thailand are rooted in history, age-old social and cultural interactions and extensive people-to-people -people contacts. A report. The talks between India's External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar and Thailand's Deputy Prime Minister Bahida Nukara took place at the 10th India-Thailand Joint Commission meeting. The two ministers reviewed progress in wide-ranging areas of bilateral cooperation, including in defence and security, trade and investments, connectivity, science and technology. Bahida Nukara was on a visit to India from February 25th to 28th. During his visit, both the countries signed MOU for academic collaboration in Ayurveda and Thai traditional medicine. Moreover, New Delhi welcomed Thailand's decision to collate the Maritime Ecology Pillar of the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. India's bilateral relations with Thailand are rooted in history, age-old social and cultural interactions and extensive people-to-people -people contacts. The shared link of Buddhism is reflected in regular pilgrimages to places of Buddhist interest in India by a large number of Thai people. Hindu elements can be found among those reflected in Thai architecture, arts, sculpture, dance, drama and literature. The holy relics of Lord Buddha and his two chief disciples from India arrived at the National Museum in Bangkok on February 22nd for a 26-day exposition. The sacred antiquities excavated at Pripavah village in northern Uttar Pradesh state were carried in an Indian Air Force aircraft. The governor of India's eastern state of Bihar, Rajendra Vishwanath Arlekar and Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment, Virendra Kumar, who delivered the relics to them, were formally welcomed by Thailand's Prime Minister. एक तरह से हमारे दोनों देशों की जो एकात्मता है बौद्धिक हो आध्यात्मिक हो सांस्कृतिक हो इन सब एकात्मताओं का उजागर करने वाला आज का क्षण है द होली आर्टिफैक्ट्स आर बीइंग फीचर्ड अक्रॉस मल्टीपल वेन्यूज इन थाईलैंड द रिलिक्स वर प्लेस्ड इन बैंकॉक्स सनम लुआंग रॉयल फील्ड्स फॉर पब्लिक एक्सपोजिशन ऑन फेब्रुअरी 23 to honor the relics journey, a colorful procession featuring participants in traditional Thai attire with musical instruments was also held as they marched towards the shrine. This is a royal ceremony, like you know, uh, bringing, uh, bringing the Buddha here after Buddha relics after 30 years. And we learned that it is going to be in four cities uh, for the worship. And uh, today we are happy to join the big procession. The relics are set to return to India on March 19. The event is being organized with the support of India's Ministry of External Affairs, Indian Embassy in Thailand, International Buddhist Confederation, National Museum and State Government of Madhya Pradesh. Now we take you to a fascinating and vibrant spectacle event that unfolded on the streets of Sri Lanka's capital Colombo. Elephants dressed in colourful costumes paraded through the night as an integral part of an annual Buddhist festival. 
creating a mesmerizing tapestry of tradition, spirituality and celebration. Have a look. Decked in vibrant costumes, majestic elephants took center stage during an annual Buddhist festival in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo, becoming living canvases themselves. The elephants became the embodiment of grace and tradition as they paraded through Colombo streets, transformed into a canvas of country's cultural richness. The sound of traditional drumming filled the air as the procession emerged onto the streets, leaving the spectators spellbound. Now I'm in Colombo to see especially the Perahera and uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed how many people, how, uh, how crowded it is and I'm, I'm very impressed about the parade we have here. Before taking part in the procession, the elephants received religious blessings from Buddhist priests at the Ganga Ramaya temple, one of the most prominent religious places in Colombo. During the festivity, traditional drummers and dancers also delighted crowds, consisting of both locals and tourists, who lined the streets to see the procession, known as the Navam Mahaparahera. The parade is held annually in February on a full moon day. The highlight of the event is the appearance of the sacred Buddha tooth relic on a decorated and illuminated elephant. Wowed by the colors, the dancing, the fun, the turnout. Uh, it's just a beautiful country. I'm glad I came. And uh, it's significant to me because I get to experience something new in a different country. These elephants are not just participants. They are revered as symbols of wisdom, strength and compassion. The festival aims to honor these magnificent creatures and express gratitude for their role in the cultural heritage of Sri Lanka and its spirituality and culture is aptly embodied by the Elephant Parade Festival. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Japan is becoming a tourism kingdom and is looking for more upscale accommodations. Every year, 8.4 million foreign visitors arrived at Kansai International Airport. It is regarded as Western Japan's largest entrance. At Kansai International Airport, JCB is the only original international card issued in the country and offers visitors dynamic, profitable services. Also, there are convenient services for travelers. コロナの時期ですね、大変困難な時期があのございましたけれども、おかげさまで外国人訪日外国人のお客様円安の影響もあってかと思いますけれども、非常に会長にですね回復をしてきております。関西空港におきましては約7割の方が訪日の外国人
is aimed at fostering military cooperation and improving capability of executing joint operations. The Indian and Japanese Army practiced and performed various combat and action drills in Bikaner town. The two-week-long military exercise is scheduled to culminate on March 9. The Japanese credit card company JCB has come up with Osaka town's level of satisfaction and hospitality. Foreign guests relocate to the town in order to enjoy a stay after landing. Osaka is popular for sightseeing. At this hotel, card holder visitors can get a big discount. Osaka is also known as the city of satisfactory eating. That is what makes Osaka so unique. Visitors can enjoy a delicious meal and a substantial discount at this restaurant. これが旬のお魚のあと食べた後に余韻も楽しめるというものが日本料理なので器も含めて日本料理を楽しんでいただけたらと思います。The long-standing Kintetsu department store is located in Abino Harukasu. It is anticipated to draw tourists from overseas because it has one of the biggest sales floor areas in the country. こちらの免税サロンで え、海外発行の as Japan moves towards becoming a tourism kingdom, JCB is stepping up its hospitality for guests from other countries. Let's now move to Pakistan, where the former Prime Minister Imran Khan and his wife Bushra Bibi has been inducted in a graft case. They are facing the charges of receiving the bribe during Imran Khan's premiership. The latest charges follows a string of convictions against Khan in the months leading up to the Feb 8 national election, where his supporters won the most seats overall. Meanwhile, Imran Khan's party, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, has urged the International Monetary Fund to ensure conditionalities of good governance are met before any monetary grant is provided to Pakistan. A report. A Pakistani court on February 27 indicted former Prime Minister Imran Khan and his wife Bushra that they allegedly received land as a bribe during his premiership. Imran and his wife appeared in a court and pleaded not guilty in a graft case alleging they accepted the gift of land from a real estate tycoon in exchange for large sums of laundered money. The case is the second to indict Khan and his wife over acts of corruption allegedly committed while the former cricket star turned politician was in office. Outside the court, Imran Khan's lawyer said that the latest indictment was related to Al Qadir Trust, which is a non governmental welfare organization set up by Khan and his third wife Bushra Bibi in 2018 when he was still in office. Prosecutors say the trust was a front for Khan to receive a valuable 60 acres of land in a district outside Islamabad and another large piece of land close to Khan's hilltop mansion in the capital as a bribe from a real estate developer Malik Riaz Hussain, who is one of Pakistan's richest and most powerful businessmen. Hussain, who hasn't appeared before an anti-graft agency to submit his reply to summons issued to him last year, 
has denied any wrongdoing. Mr. Imran Khan, the former Prime Minister, and his wife, uh, Madam Bushra Bibi, they were indicted in the accountability reference. This is the Al Qaeda Trust reference, and they pleaded not guilty to the charge. The case has now been adjourned to next week, which is Wednesday. Uh, this is also uh, indeed imperative to highlight that the wave of political victimization is about to end now uh, for the husband and the wife because their appeals are now absolutely ripe for uh, hearing in the High Court Islamabad. Despite all the troubles, Imran Khan's lawyer pretended to be optimistic in front of media, but political analysts believe cricketer turned politician will not get relief soon. We are very optimistic and hopeful since prosecution's case uh, is absolutely bogus to say the least. Uh, they have been unable to prove the charge. The trial was concluded in the most uh, objectionable and condemnable ma uh, manner and we are hopeful that they will be honorably acquitted from these charges within this week. The latest charges follow a string of convictions against Khan in the months leading up to February 8 national election, where supporters won the most seats overall. Khan has been in jail since August in connection with other cases and has previously denied the allegations. He had already been convicted in four cases with sentences of as much as 14 years in prison, including two on graft charges that also disqualified him from taking part in politics for 10 years. Meanwhile, Imran Khan's party Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf has urged the International Monetary Fund to ensure conditionalities of good governance are met before any monetary grant is provided to Pakistan. The party has urged IMF to ensure the audit of at least 30% of national and provincial assembly seats before considering any further bailout talks with a cash-strapped country. On the other hand, analysts say a new coalition government is likely to need more funds from the global lender after the standby arrangement expires in April. Chandigarh, a vibrant city in northern India, pulsated with the fragrance of spring during its recent 52nd Rose Festival. The event showcased a rich array of flowers, including over 800 varieties of roses, which transformed the garden into a visual and aromatic feast. Take a look. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.